Body dysmorphia is a clinically recognised condition defined as a preoccupation with a perceived defect in one's appearance. Men are usually silent on matters such as body image pressures from the media, but often feel the heavy burden of these pressures and feel like they're not good enough without six-pack abs. In recent years there's been an increase in steroid juice and I wanted to investigate this and find out more about steroid juice. So I sat down with Ross Eitner, who uses steroids to supplement his training but claims there's a much healthier way to do it which is far less damaging to your body. Well, I am Ross Eitner, I'm 25 years old. I've been training in mainstream gyms for the past five years but I've always had an interest in weight training. I've been doing this since I was about 12 to 13. What sort of got you into it? Was there a specific person or a specific thing that got you into it? I, I suppose it was almost family related in a sense. I mean, none of, none of my family are bodybuilders, but they're all manly men, boxers, fighters, things, things of a very mm, sort of butch profession, you know what I mean? Construction workers, that sort of thing. And, as a kid, I was always a really weedy kid, like, like a lot of us, you know, I was six stone dripping wet and I guess like I started going to work with my dad when I was about 10 and you know, I, the things that I was trying to do, I couldn't pick things up and stuff like that and it frustrated me so yeah. I got a set of dumbbells when I was about 10, 11 years old and it went from there really, it just be it became an obsession almost immediately. In terms of performance enhancers, steroids, anything like that, what's your experience with them? From, so sort of, from um, the beginning, I guess. From the beginning, a friend of the family was a uh, bodybuilder. He's a national champion, one Mr. England, one Mr. Cornwall. Wow. And I was about 14. And I basically played him day and night. I want to try steroids, I want to try steroids. And maybe he shouldn't have, you know, but he, we basically came to an agreement. I'd, I'd leave him alone if he let me try it. So... My first ever experience was with testosterone cypionate, which is a sort of moderate lasting ester, so it's in the, blo in the bloodstream for about five days. And he injected me in my glute, in your butt cheek, and mm -hmm. I hit the floor, bang, passed out. Some people don't react as quickly as I do. I count myself as considerably lucky because I like to think I get every effect out of it. Whether it's placebo and it's mental or not, I do not know, but... When I'm on steroids, I train harder, I train longer, I do everything better, in my own opinion, and I don't suffer any of the anger issues that you seem mm. to see. Like, roid rage is just a myth. Mm -hmm. Steroids are an amplifier. If you're a manic depressive and you're on steroids, you're going to be suicidal. If you're an asshole on steroids, you're going to be a bigger asshole. That's yeah. just the way it is. I'm fairly well adjusted for these things, so I just take it as what it is, it is a tool. You're using it to enhance your training, to enhance your physique. Yeah. Don't let it affect you outside of... No, yeah. They are addictive in a way, you know. Mm -hmm. I know lots of guys who go on and, you know, you're only meant to be on for eight to 12 weeks tops. I know guys that are on all year round. Yeah. In fact, they're not going to live very long. It's That's the end of it. There are... There is that borderline of addiction that it gets dangerous because nobody wants to talk about it. No one, a, a lot of your average gym goers, if you went into, I don't know, Pure Gym, one of the student gyms, I guarantee you if, you, if everyone was honest, you could pull out 30 students who have been sold substance A, substance B and substance C by someone unnamed. Did they tell you how to take it or what to do after you stop to take care of your body? Well, no, they just told to put it in. Not just bashing students here, but I have found in previous experience there's some of the worst people, worst advocates for it. Go to the gym, they get their pump on. You know they're getting big. They've started using gear. Six weeks later, they're huge, so they want to go out, want to go on the pole. Next thing you know, they're out drinking 15, 20 pints and shots in a night as well, trying to attract said girl or whatever. You know, and steroids are very harmful on the liver and kidneys. Exactly the same thing that alcohol is hard on. Mm. They don't go well together. No. You do that for six months and eventually, you know, that's all it can take is six months. And I've known guys who are in their 20s end up on dialysis. There's a time and a place for everything. Like, mm. I'm, I would admit I'm not perfect, but who if is? I'm running, if I'm using steroids, I don't drink. I don't drink for a month before or a month afterwards until my body, I've done the pre-cycle and the post-cycle and got my body clean again. Because... You've got to make room inside yourself from one, from one substance to another. And as for people saying steroids are cheating, I, I, I think that's the most stupid sentence ever put together in the world, really. <laughs> because Formula 1s or, you know, race cars, 
So you bolt a turbo to your car. Are you cheating? Mm. You take your car to a mechanic to get something fixed and he uses a spanner to undo something instead of his fingers. Is he cheating? No, he's using a tool and that's all steroids are. They're a tool. If Arnold could get to the size he was on 30 milligrams of Dianabol and 200 milligrams of testosterone a week, why is it that the kid down the road at the gym has got to take 70 milligrams of Dianabol a day and 2,000 milligrams of testosterone a week? Yeah. And then he's not getting half the results. We've just got to know the body. I also spoke to Ben Jain, who's senior lecturer in sport and health science at Marjon. He offers a different perspective on steroids. The problem with steroid use is that people are, seem to be increasingly using steroids. So um, I've been working in fitness and health and sport for 20 years or so. And 20 years ago, it was really um, the domain of uh, sports performers. And it was all about Eastern Europe and it was about people performing at the Olympics. And there was always people at lower levels that were taking part um, that were using steroids but increasingly I think over recent years that kind of level has decreased where gym users now more and more gym users are making use of steroids as well as all the other supplements that they've always kind of engaged in. The, the, the media has been refined over the last 20 years to um, make people feel as though they should be striving personally for some perfection and control as well. Yeah. So it's about having control over your life and kind of um, uh, putting less emphasis on the environment that we live in and more about us as individuals and what we can achieve and so all of that ends up with people having lower self-esteem and it's similar to the cosmetics in industry which sells us this magical product and magical endpoint. We mm -hmm. it looks like it's attainable to everybody but it just makes us feel worse and so we have to engage in different practices which make us feel like we're getting somewhere. Yeah, so could you just tell me a little bit about um, some of the side effects of testosterone and other anabolic steroids? One of the issues is people using them incorrectly. Mm -hmm. So we have sharing of needles and um, conditions such as hepatitis being passed around. But then there's an awful lot of people that are quite capable of using steroids, what they would term properly or safely. Mm -hmm. Some of those issues are, are less prevalent. But then even the people that are able to use steroids in a way which is, um, which is as might, might be prescribed medically, so they're, they're using all kind of dosing cycles as well, mm -hmm. and um, peaking and, um, and programming their use of steroids. Yeah. There's still these long-term issues, issues like gynecomastia, where men develop breast tissue, and then that breast tissue in turn can lead to breast cancer sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, shrinking of testicles, we have erectile dysfunction, boldness. There's the whole rational versus irrational decision-making process. Um, smoking is the best example I can give. People have known for years that it's detrimental to health, yet people still choose to smoke, um, primarily thinking that it's not going to happen to them. And if they, they can do it properly and safely, then they're not going to be the one who, who sees the bad side effects. It's really good to speak to Ross openly about his steroid use and find out a little bit more just about the ins and outs of that sort of stuff. And it's really good to speak to Ben and find out about the side effects and some of the stuff that can stick around if you do use them wrong. That's all for now. I'm Alex Green, reporting for Jam Live News.